Hello, I'm Silas from Skahoy, and today I would like to show you how to add one or maybe two functions to a button or even more. So let's get into it. So I have racked open here in front of me the wonderful configuration interface we use for doing so many wonderful stuff on your blue pill devices. I'm connected to an Airfly Pro or even I'm not connected, you can see it's missing the IP address. That's fine for this test, I've just added it manually. I am though connected to an ATEM switcher um, where I can see sources going on. So if I go to configuration tab, I can enable uh, simulation mode and then I could set the source to preview. I could run an auto and see the two sources swap its place. All right, so imagine I would like to set my source into preview and I want to run an auto. At the same time, at one click on one button. That's totally doable. So I would personally recommend starting with editing, uh, editing user buttons because they have a structure in the tree and so on. So they are simple to do stuff with, but all buttons, all places on the controller can be changed as well. So I can click this user button. And then I will add a parameter to it um, for now. So I could select if I want to operate different stuff inside my controller, variables. The, um, I can even press more if I'm interested in things like sleep time and stuff like this. I could also just select the bicycle and select the device I would like to control. So let's find preview source. We have that here, it pops up and asks for what ME, that's pretty simple on the it's a mini, you don't have one. So I can select that on the list. After this, a re reactor pops up with a request for what uh, mass behavior you maybe would like to use. So the behavior you're using here, master behaviors, they could be as well, are what happens when you press the button. So if you have a preset button on our PC controllers, you uh, could press the button to um, recall a preset or you could hold the button to store a preset. So all of this is built into the behaviors. Um, so I will just press confirm for now because then we get a lot of stuff prepared for us. So now uh, it have added these constants, uh, constant sets to the uh, inspector here. If I could press input one, I could fill in that I want source number one. And you can see the display is reflecting the name of the source on input one. All of that is just working automatically. Uh, so that's pretty nice. If I open the show more, I can see all of this feedback built into it. So that is stuff like if it gets into preview, it should light green and so on. It's also things regarding reading uh, the label and so on and that I can fill in an alternative label here and then it would show that in the display. So all of that is uh, built in with uh, this feedback part. What is happening when I press the button is all going on in the event handler. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Event handler is built in that way where um, uh, you select a type for buttons. It would usually be binary you'll use. And then you can see what it does. As default, it just sets a value. And that's what you have here. You have a set value. And that's the behavior constant input. Okay, so it's the behavior's constant. It's this, and it's input, it's that. So it will set one into the parameter called IO reference. That's uh, the source up here. So it will set one into preview input video source on ME1. So this is an advanced way of seeing it. That's why this is usually hide away. But if you want to dig more into it, it's totally possible. So why not try to set it up uh, where I want to have it first into preview and then I want it to uh, execute an auto. Uh, and that is definitely doable. So I can change my set mode. We have a lot of different modes you could set a value to. For this video, I will focus on the sequence. So when I enable sequence, it doesn't use the set value and the parameter. So if I click this button now, you can see nothing happens. It doesn't send it to preview anymore because I need to add steps. So my first step would be the same as before. 
but I can actually load that down so I can find my latest function preview input video source for one, that's for ME1, and press submit, and then uh, fill in what value I would send to the preview, that would be my source number one. So I can select a literal value and write one, press submit, and when I press the button now, the source jumps into one. So that's pretty simple, working as it should. I could add a wait time, so I could add like 500 milliseconds here, and then when I press the button, it will wait half a second before it's executed. That's not what I want for this task, I want it to get into preview, then I want to do the auto. So let's select a device call, atom, auto, I can scroll down, I think that's almost at the end. It is auto transition for ME1. And I would like to do that after 500 milliseconds. So let's uh, try out the button now. Uh, I could just switch the source away. So it would set the source to preview, wait a bit, do a transition. So this is how simple you could add uh, more than one action into a button. And please note, you could also edit existing behaviors uh, as we did it here. You can build it from scratch if you like to, if you have a complex case, or else you could just have the benefits of using a behavior uh, or a custom built master behavior um, for getting feedback and different stuff working. And then you can add more into it by changing the mode to sequence and add your steps. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for your time and have a lovely day.